Hey guys, how's it going? I'm sitting here with Ryan Petty from Off Camber Industries. Yeah. Off Camber off Industries. Industry. Yep, Off Camber Industries. So, we wanted to talk a little bit about your car. Okay. What it is. Yep. Why it is. <laughs> Peer pressure. So, short answer. Yeah, go ahead and. Uh, so, uh, this thing started off as a 2021 Turbo S. Velocity. Wait, 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 wait. Can't start yet. Oh, okay. What are you doing? <laughs> Hold on. Let me run in here real quick. You good? <laughs> All right. Sorry for that rude interruption, but <laughs> since I wanted to pay homage to you guys and having Twizzlers all the time. That's an Eric thing. Uh, if you guys, it, it's an Eric thing. Yeah. yeah. If you watch the videos, Eric, uh, Eric is uh, another off camber but guy and that's his thing. We, I wanted to bring revolutionary size. Here we go. See, it's already starting to play. Whoa. Twizzlers. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Dude. <laughs> Eric. These are revolution Dude, size Twizzlers. Look at this thing. <laughs> we got to step up our game now. This is double the size of a normal Twizzler. <laughs> See, this is <laughs> extra long. We've been outdone. For my pleasure. We've been outdone. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. Anyway, just to start that off, <laughs> you don't have to eat it if you don't want to. It's delicious. I'm for sure going to eat it. This means we have to go Nobody ride. Nobody wants after this. to hear us chomp on camera. Right. We can mute that or play some video or something on top of that. All right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and explain to us. Yeah. Uh, what this car is. So started life as. Oh, this, sorry. That's sorry. Cool. Uh, it started off life as a 2021 Turbo S Velocity. Um, and it was supposed to be a holdover car for me. I had a car on order, uh, not to be named manufacturer that everybody's been waiting on. Um, so I wasn't going to buy a new car. And then uh, I moved down here to southern Utah and uh, ran into a couple of uh, friends, Royce being the first person I ever really met that got, kind of got me into the side-by-side -side culture here. And it's a big part of living in southern Utah for a lot of people. So he had a Turbo S at the time. You guys have probably all seen that, or if you haven't, you know, watch some of the old off camber videos, they're, they're on there. But uh, he got me into it. I, I wanted a Polaris because of the versatility of the machine. Um, from my perspective, I don't think there's a better off the shelf machine that you can buy, um, you know, that, that does everything pretty darn good. Um, the Turbo, Turbo S. S. It, yeah. It's the best all-around car as far as I'm concerned. I, I think I, if you talk to a lot I of people, tend to agree with that, they'll yeah. agree. The width, it starts 72 inches wide, and the Turbo S specifically. Um, 72 inches wide, has a 117, I think, inch wheelbase, which is good in the rocks, but not too, too long. Like the Can-Am Maxes tend to hang up on a lot of stuff. Um, Turbo S's tend to be pretty good in the rocks, real, actually real good in the rocks. A um, few minor tweaks, and, and you can get that thing dialed in, and it's, I, I think, the best machine out there. Um, it can still do the dunes. Is it going to, you know, outrun most Can-Ams? Probably not. But you can still have a whole lot of fun. You can still make it up all the hills. You know, you can still pretty much do anything you want in the dunes. And for trails, it's great. 72 inches wide, um, snaky, sandy trails. Man, there's, it, it's, it's a tough machine to beat if you need four seats. It really is. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I chose this car to start, and then... And we've kind of just been over the last couple months building her up to, to what she what you currently see now. You had one I did. previously though. <laughs> this isn't to this start. is my second holdover car. <laughs> so my first holdover car was a, a Polaris Turbo, not the S version, so 64 inch wide. Um, and it was a good car. It was a real good car. Uh, no complaints on that, but getting into some of the rock crawling stuff that we were doing, the stability was was the question mark on that one. And uh, I bought that car because there wasn't a Turbo S available. Uh, and that was the first thing that I could find that was available at the time. And um, You mean available to purchase locally? Correct. Or, yeah. I mean, yeah. they were pretty they were much non-existent yeah. when I was too, trying to find them. Too hard them. to find. Yeah, yeah they were non-existent. So one, that one came up and instantly I jumped on that one and bought that one. And then 
when this was available, I sold that one and, and jumped into this one. And, um, you know, e e machine's great, no matter what, 64 inches wide, 72 inches wide. But for what we're going to do and, and put it through the rocks and things like that, the added uh, width really makes a big difference. So. so when you first, when did you first move down here? I moved down here last July. And that was your... That was my very first side-by-side. -side. Was it? And that you didn't have any experience prior to that? No. Uh, I mean, I grew up uh, Michigan Sand Dunes on a, on a 250 R3-wheeler. Oh, okay. So did that when I was younger, high school, you know, high school years and stuff like that. But as far as side-by-sides weren't even really a thing. I mean, messed around a little bit on like a John Deere Gator with a truck bed. And, oh, yeah. You know, every stupid kid tries to jump jump one of those things and if you've ever tried it don't it's not fun um well it's fun <laughs> until you land <laughs> it's, it's not really the taking off part that hurts you it's the it's the landing part but um no i mean side by sides weren't even a thing so we kind of like when i moved down here i had this this great idea this is part of the reason why we chose to move to this area was for the the fantastic off-roading i mean there's just un, unparalleled anywhere else in the country um and then to be this close to sand hollow I mean, geez. yeah, it, yeah, we're super lucky. It's, um, it, you forget sometimes when you walk outside and you see the scenery that we have. Yeah. If you stop and think about it, it's like, wow, this this place is pretty amazing. Phenomenal. I mean, I came, uh, we lived in Except Washington Except there's a State. building going up across the street <laughs> right there that blocked all the views. views. <laughs> you still got this one. Here. This is pretty, <laughs> pretty epic. But uh, yeah, Southern Utah is... is uh, is, is a special place. I mean, it's just no matter how you cut it, if you're a hiker, a biker, a side-by-side off-road guy, I mean, it, there's something for everybody and the scenery is just un, unparalleled, man. It's, it's awesome. I kind of think that you got away lucky because Royce already had a Turbo S. He did. You should, you should have got, you should have got something else. You know, there was, <laughs> so the whole idea was, I mean, I wasn't going to keep the car when the other oh, one showed okay, up, right? Okay. So I wanted something that I knew, something that somebody else knew that if I had an issue or, you know, whatever, spare parts, you know, whatever that, that may be, that, you know, I, I had somebody that knew the machine kind of inside and out and he had had that, this is like his fifth razor, I think he's on right now, is the one he's building. So um, kind of the ins and outs and, and I'm partial to, you know, American products. So the Polaris kind of was a, a draw for me. I like, you know, the way it sounds. Um, I don't know. I, I just, you know, fell into it, I guess. And now I'm to the point where I'm not sure I want to get rid of it. Yeah. Even when the other one shows up. So it's yeah. been a kind of a turning point in how capable this thing really is. Yeah. And, and what it can actually do where I don't think I, I want anything else. I mean, maybe a Dynamics Edition, but who knows? Yeah. So tell me, what, what are some of the first things that you did as far as upgrades? So very first thing I did was take the wheels and tires that I'd bought for the 64 inch wide car and put them on this one. There was a set of uh, 33 inch Terramasters on uh, System 3 SB5 bead locks. And that made a huge difference coming from the stock big horns and I think their 30s come stock on that one. Um, that was the first thing we did. Um, man, what else did we do? Did the skid plate? Royce finally talked me into a skid plate. He drug me through double Sammy a couple times uh, without a skid plate, and I got sick of hearing the crunching and <laughs> grinding noises. So it's not, um, you know, one of those super, you know, nice appearance upgrades. But I mean, as as you know, it's almost yeah, imperative to yeah. have oh, out yeah. here. I love SSS makes a good product. I lo I love how it comes up on the side like that and protects the protects the side even though i mean it's just a couple inches but it this specific one yeah it kind of wraps out from underneath yeah and you don't have to worry about any you know damaging your plastics you're eating up your side rails on your frame here or anything like that um hands down by far the best one of the best additions i put on the car yeah i, I mean i can't complain um it, it's been through dang near everything we you know slid down everything and yeah it's uh, it's protected everything underneath there, and I, I don't think I'd build a car without putting one on there. Um, after that, we did. Uh, You've done quite a bit. I have. I mean, it's hard to kind of remember the order of everything going together because yeah, it happened pretty quick. I mean, I bought this car in December, so December to basically yesterday, I was where I kind of called it and said, "Okay, I think I'm probably close to done." Um, <laughs> 
rugged radios were one of the first upgrades we put in here. Um, huge, huge, huge fan of having communications when we're riding around in separate cars. It helps us kind of communicate and you don't have to eat dust as much as, yeah. you know, if you had to maintain visual sight for the guy in front of you. Do you sing? Do you sing for Royce and You know, occasionally when, when it strikes me, I do, but... Because uh, <laughs> I would. They usually just turn I'd it start off. singing. They just turn it right <laughs> off. They don't want to hear me sing. Um, that that was the big. I think the biggest upgrade was the radios. It was kind of nice to have. And then um, moving on to, we eventually put the doors on. Came ordered those doors through you guys, and uh, hands down, I think for for the money, the best looking doors that you can possibly buy for a Turbo S. I don't think there's anything out there for me personally that that even compares. Yeah. Um, you know, from the the smooth skin without any rivets or anything in in the in the way to the kind of stealth looking you know setup that they got here moto armor doors i love them yeah i mean I, yeah they're good looking i sure. wouldn't build a turbo s without them um lane at voodoo uh fab down the street here he uh worked with me patiently on building this custom cage he kind of dealt with me going in and kind of figuring out what my you know what was in my head and trying to get it out and for him to be able to make into metal so the, the uh, off camber edition voodoo cage um that's been huge when you just drop pencil drawings that look like stick figures it's hard to take that and make a cage out of it it's crazy you know <laughs> so i had an idea um royce's red car or the gray and red car had uh had a sandworks cage on there originally um and still does i believe but uh i wanted that that same kind of flow mm -hmm. where it was a little bit higher in the front and kind of got real super low in the back um but I, I wanted to change it up a little bit so we changed the pillars a little bit we changed the front a little bit um definitely changed the back and added this uh this like rounded hoop where the roof kind of folds over the back yeah. and um gives a kind of unique look and included some plates on the side with our uh with our off camber power logo on there and um you know just really just knocked it out of the park it, it looks I good mean, it turned out great i love the i love the sparkle in the powder coat too yeah he talked me into that one i wasn't i was i was just gonna go straight who gloss. talked to you lane did lane did he's like did you he? got to do something crazy in there man yeah. so he talked me into the gold flake in there um i had the chupacabra mirrors the cuero mirrors from chupacabra so we uh, sent those off the powder coat to match the cage and those turned out pretty good um, the last and latest edition were, I mean, we did the obviously 18s and, and 36 inch tall tires. Um, huge. Yeah. Huge. I mean, it totally transforms the way this thing looks. I mean, I, I had 35s on it before and overall tire package. I mean, they're about the same. I mean, those, the 36 system threes are roughly 35 and maybe a little bit of change tall actual. Um, but throwing an 18 inch rim in the middle of it sure does change the look of it. It does. They look awesome. It's I love, I love, I know it's kind of bling bling throwing the 18s on there, but man, it looks good. It's aggressive, but it, it looks good, man. And I haven't had any issues so far. We've been out three or four different times and I don't notice a difference between 18s and 15s, um, with rubbing or anything like that. I mean, you're going to, you're going to rash your wheels up. It's going to happen if you, if you, if you rock crawl. Just, yeah it is what it is yep um what else did we do I added the seats so we did amped off-road seats um actually came in here and sat in all the different models you guys have out here in that one when i finally got to that one it was kind of like one of those goldilocks moments where like, oh this is it this is the one right like it for me personally i mean like there's not a bad seat if you're gonna buy an aftermarket seat out there I can't think of one that I've sat in that I'm like, man, I don't like this at all, especially over the stock. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, anything's going to be a massive, massive, massive improvement. But for me, I'm built a little wider up in the shoulders and it seemed like the amped off-road seats kind of open up a little bit more at the top and still maintain the snugness down here and through your hips and stuff. So those, uh, those are the seats we ended up going, going with. Um, and they've been, they've been great. Yeah. We yeah. They're call them yeah, like the reclining couple. racing seats it feels yeah. like you're sitting at home in a lazy boy and uh they've they've been nothing but awesome i forgot have you 
not done a gear reduction yet? I have, yeah. Oh, you have? Yeah, okay. that was okay. that was probably when you say, what was your first mod? That was the first one. Okay. I, I mean, yeah. I think three weeks after owning the machine, I uh, undertook the task of ripping the tranny out and tearing it apart. And that was the first gear reduction I've ever done. But I watched a couple of UTV, uh, YouTube videos and was like, oh man, if that, you know, if that guy can do it, I could probably figure there it out. There you go. So we did, uh, I think it's 12% overall, reverse and high gear. And then uh, another 20 something percent in, in low. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm 37% overall in low, 35 to 37, and then 12% in high and reverse. Um, and then went through and did all Sandcraft bearings. So replaced all the stock bearings in there and put the good, the good bearings in there and um, the reinforced plate and all that other stuff. So nice. As far as I know, I did everything you possibly do to bulletproof that transmission as much as humanly possible, um, and it's been it's been really really good. I I, I still need to do mine too. It's I'm, so good. It, I just I, I'm a procrastinator. <laughs> don't procrastinate. It's it's. I like the, to buy belts. It's one of the best mods ever, um, and I'm still kind of figuring out with changing wheels and tires and get transmission gears and everything what the perfect clutching scenario is um so we're, we're still try trying to feel all that stuff out i'm not a clutching expert so i've just been kind of throwing weight here throwing weight there and just kind of seeing what what works the best yeah. and i don't think i've hit the magic sauce yet so if anybody out there's got a got a special magic sauce for 36s and <laughs> yeah. gear reduction um all ears maybe sterling maybe sterling does he probably does <laughs> i haven't hit him up yet for advice um, and then you you also did some zebra springs. We did, yeah, zebra springs, night and day. I mean, I can't say enough about a spring kit on either a Veloc, any car, any car. Period. The stock springs are set up. They have some rules that they need to follow from the manufacturers for rollovers and things like that. So, the spring setups that they put on these things that they have to, with the rules that they have to follow, kind of limit. I think the potential of the of the vehicle yeah you don't really know how good these things are until you put a spring kit on it and once you do you i guarantee it'll be one of the first mods you ever put on a car afterwards yeah. it's night and day like from little chop in the in the sand and stuff that usually would you know kind of shake you crazy it, it doesn't it goes away yeah it's not even not even existing anymore yeah it made a it made a world of difference for me especially on the front end yeah you, yeah, like you said, the choppiness and everything yeah. that's... And with these, you don't have the adjustability that you do with the, um, with the Dynamics Edition. Yeah. So the Dynamics Edition, I think, is even another layer better um, on top of the, the Walker Evans setups where you, you're dealing with just a clicker and, and trying to dial it in a little bit, you know, for almost every single instance where, you know, with the Dynamics, it's so many thousand times per second that it's trying to figure out what's going on and making corrections. So, yeah. Um, can't wait to get out and give Royce's a shot and see kind of what the difference between the, the Turbo S Velocity and the actual Dynamics car is and how much better, if any, that other one rides. Yeah. Kind of excited about yeah, that. Yeah, that'll be good. So, what's your, if, what's your favorite thing about this car? I, my favorite thing is, like, it does everything. I mean, it, I can go from rocks, I can go to trails, I can go to the sand dunes, I can do everything. It, the, the one car we does everything. We haven't taken mudding yet. I we need to, we need to pay no. some respect to those people back east and take hey, us mudding. You guys <laughs> are a whole another breed of animal. I can't do it. I can't put her through. <laughs> I, the washing alone. The, I couldn't do it. I'm, like I don't have that that built into me. I mean, I could. I, it looks like a blast in someone else's machine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Maybe a rental company out there uh, wants yeah. to sponsor a. Uh, an East Coast mud trip, but uh, yeah, it, we're we're kind of different out here on the West Coast. It's uh, it's more um, kind of I don't I don't know how you say it, blingy, I guess. It's it's dusty, that's for sure. Very dusty for sure. But people don't tend to um, they tend to keep their stuff like pristine. Yeah. Where we try not to roll a car over. We try not to. It you doesn't know, happen. You still roll them over. It does. It does. But like <laughs> putting it like it's so much different. I, I mean, riding here and, and seeing videos of people 
um, you know, riding out east and where it's, you know, the rocks are more slick and there's rain and they're going up these mountain trails and just bombing on everything. Oh, yeah. Where yeah. it's more technical and calculated here, I guess, and lower speed. Um, I don't know. So I'm down to try it all. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah. not this. <laughs> Rental, that's good. That's a good idea. <laughs> there you go. That might be the solution. That's a good idea. You can do a, an off camber rental special Ooh. video. Ooh. But don't be, mm, I don't know, that might not be a good idea. You'll be end up buying them afterwards because they have proof of what <laughs> we'll you did. We'll buy the extra them. insurance. <laughs> extra insurance. Um, any advice for new UTV owners? I mean, I'm still relatively new. Um, well, what what have you what have you found out in the last year of? I would say, I mean, safety's number one. I mean, if you're if you're buying so specifically my '64 inch car, when I bought it, it had the the lap you know the regular car style seat belts in there. First thing I did was rip those things out and put harnesses in. Um, the stock seats are not the safest with the plastic bases and kind of all that stuff, but. With a good set of harnesses, at least you're locked into the cage and you're not going to go flying out of the out of the car. So, first off, I mean safety's paramount. I mean I put my kids in this thing, so there's harnesses all four seats, and uh, just want to make sure that num number one safety. Like don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything outside of your ability. Um, you know, take it easy at the beginning. You don't have to you don't have to do what you're seeing on YouTube or seeing what you're you're seeing other people do. Yeah. You know go out and just drive it get used to how it feels how it handles how it reacts to different uh situations and different you know uh, types of, of riding and things like that um first thing we did was uh out here put my wife and kids in in the car and we drove all the way around sand hollow slow i mean west rim trail all the way around to top of the world and just got a lay of the land and kind of felt you know what's this machine going to do how far you know off camber can i get this thing before it's you know before it feels weird yeah yeah and you know these machines are super 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 capable um they're probably more capable than our abilities the first time you get in them and uh my advice would, for new people would just be feel it out get to know your machine make sure you're safe and uh don't you know you don't have to go out there and win races and things like that right off the jump i mean it'll it'll come it's gonna it's fun either way it doesn't matter if you're going five miles an hour or 50 miles an hour I like, I have a good time no matter yeah. what I'm doing in that thing. Whether it's just, you know, strapping paddle boards to the top and going over, driving over to the beach and hanging out at the lake. So, I mean, they're just so versatile. They do so much. And, um, you know, it, it, it's a great investment. It's fun. I have a great time. For sure. W one, one last question. Sure. What's your favorite trail at Sand Hollow? The maze. The maze? Hands down. I mean, the maze, uh, it's, the maze is my favorite. I think the maze is almost everybody's favorite because of the variety. Uh, yeah, the so the variety you can run it forward, you can run it backward relatively easily. Um, it's pretty long, pretty wide open. It's not one of those uh, out here at Sand Hollow. The trails tend to be a little bit shorter. Um, you know, you can get through most trails in Sand Hollow in 20, 30 minutes if you're actually you know going and and doing that. The maze I think is a little bit it's a little bit longer, a little bit more drawn out. There's a lot of optional obstacles in there that you can kind of kind of get into and, and mess around on but i think if i had to pick one the maze is, is the guy double sam is iconic too i mean that was the first trial i ever did out at sand hollow by myself nice that was my initiation was it when i bought the 64 inch car i had nothing on it bone stock and uh race like hey let's go so went over there followed him all the way through double sam in a bone stock turbo <laughs> nice <laughs> turbo four razor and been hooked ever since so right on man well Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> Anytime, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, man. We'll see you guys next time on Revolutionary Discussions. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A couple last questions that I wanted to <laughs> We've been sitting Brian. here talking for about an, no, an hour, right? <laughs> and uh, these, these things have been coming up, and we're like, oh, we gotta, we got to come back to those. Here's one. Uh, do you have to ask your wife every time you do an upgrade? I don't. She is, uh, she's pretty cool about that. She doesn't want to know, and she doesn't ask questions. 
and I don't tell her. So it maintains the peace in the house. Oh but when she sees new doors come in, she knows that there's a cost associated with it. So something from Target Do I get a up, new? Okay. Something shows up at my house that kind of evens it out. So <laughs> she knows if she doesn't complain, then I won't complain and it's a wash. If you don't talk price, then it probably doesn't even out. <laughs> I'm definitely winning this battle. <laughs> And what, this is, this is another thing I like to ask people. What's the craziest thing you've done in this thing? Oh, geez. Uh, boy, I don't know. Uh, since it's a pretty, some pretty good jumps lately, um, you guys may or may not have seen those, but that one and, uh, I don't know, going up, uh, you gotta be nuts. Going up is pretty, uh, it's pretty gnarly if you've never seen it in person. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's probably it. Cool. To be determined. Yeah. Something else is going to come for sure. Oh, for sure. Boy, I've been a couple of weeks. I'm probably going to do something stupid. I, I, I tipped mine over. That wasn't the, cra it wasn't crazy. I wasn't doing anything crazy. It was just dumb. That's when it gets you. It was just dumb. I'm not, I haven't gotten that one yet. So I'm assuming it's coming at some point. Yeah. So. Alrighty. That's it. Cool.